All right, so we're at building one or two, building, building two, two. Yep. in EnviroSep where they make modular chiller plants. And what we're looking at is the base of the chiller plant, right? Correct, yeah. This is actually the bottom of the base, so it's turned upside down. Oh. This is flipped, it would flip yeah, over, the chiller would go, so I got it. Okay. Yeah, so uh, you'll, you'll notice in here too, like when you zoom in on some of these two, we're, we're, we paint them over top, put it so it's a little rust prevention there too. And we'll obviously fully paint it um, just prior to the installation going in there. Got so it. all of our bases, I would say um, most of our bases that, that are going in North America, uh, we put insulation in them. So you can see in here where we have maybe like a six inch I-beam rail in there, right? Uh, again, these are these are engineered bases. We don't need uh, I-beam, wide planks, I-beams on every five, 10 feet. Right, right. Cooking cutter. You know so what you it's, it's actually engineered right. for the specific duty. But inside here, we'll actually put in the drains that go in there. We'll do, you can see it's the bottom of the uh, of a uh, French drain that's in there. Right, right. Top that, I have a grade on there. And then it'll go into a common header system, deploy down to the ground or do a pump out unit. In case you get a chill, a, chill, a, a pipe leak. Pipe leak, yep. Right. Yep. Yeah. Or they want to wash down construction, right. push it all in there, squeegee it into there, and then just have it there. So it can either go to a flooded system that's going to go down. I or it can be into a, uh, a unit where it's just a submersible pump in there and it ejects it to a different location. That's my dream home. What's that? Wash down floors at a big drain. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could probably do that for you. Might be yeah. really expensive, but, uh, I might have to buy one of these to live in. Yeah. yeah. But we, our insulation that'll go in here will be a polyurethane and it'll have, a, a, we guarantee up to three inches, but most likely when they're putting in there, It'll go just to the tops of these I beams that are six inches in here. Right. So you right. get a little bit of overvalue. So minimum there. would be three inches. Minimum three inches. But you're we'll getting a lot more than that. Yeah, 100 percent Why yeah. is it important to ice to to um uh foam the base, to insulate the base? So if you're going to a cold climate, got gotcha. and you have you know, this particular unit we have PVC uh going out to the client asked for. We do stainless steel. We try and stay away from carbon steel because what happens is these these drains are not always used. So they get a little bit of water and the water just sits there. And if it's in the carbon seal, it's just gonna sit there, rust out, and you're gonna prematurely fail. In some parts of the country, that'll actually freeze. So yes, exactly, yeah. Right, right. So here in South Carolina, we don't have that too much. Yeah, but uh, but most likely uh, this project right here, I know this is where this is going, and this is actually going into the desert. Um, this one will not have the insulation in here. Doesn't need it. Yeah, this is, this right. is phase three or two of another project that uh, we're doing for uh, another high-end client. I understand. Really thought. Secret right. client. Right. Yeah, secret clients. Uh, and all these are engineered per the module you're building. Yeah, They're so not, one size fits all. Yeah, no, and we have we have a software that we utilize right. to actually does structural analysis. So if you notice in some of these that there's some parts that just aren't welded, but the, the strength part of the I-beam itself is actually welded, full penetrating weld to it, that's the only portion that needs to be. So Got for it. years, we used to just come out there, we would just build a base. We didn't engineer it. So probably about 15 years ago, we started engineering our bases for actually what, what it's actually going to be deployed for. We found out that we got to pull a lot of steel out, right, right, right. rather than make it less uh, lighter, lighter to go down the road. Right. If you were just building it, you know this is going to work, but it's yeah. probably more than you need. That, kind of that's when I see some stuff online there, yeah. of, uh, some competitors or guys that are just starting out building up these where they're doing me too's. They saw it yeah. somewhere else and it had full flange I beams on everything. Right. I can tell you our first base that we did for a hospital, it was 12 foot by 48 feet and it had a lot of me too type stuff in there. Right. And we said, we're just wasting money here. Let's just engineer. So we bought engineer software. We have lights, professional engineers, structural, mechanical, electrical, and chemical all here in the virus stuff. So it. we like, so we, we sell an engineered product. It's not just a chiller plant, it's an right. engineered chiller plant. You're not just assembling things, you're actually engineering the, the plants. Right. Yeah, very nice. But um, and then we have rigs that are set up, so they're actually doing a base right down there. We won't go too close to them because it'll get really loud. And plus, they're also lying around some uh, some dust there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you'll notice in there, if you see the actual base itself, it's actually uh, arced. So what we do is we pre-stress wow. yeah. the, the, the I-beam there, and then we weld it. So back in the, up to the left-hand side there, you see a large square box that's filled with concrete. So I'm not sure how much that thing weighs, but we'll actually go in there, we'll pre we'll tack down the I-beam, stress it, put that weight on there, and then we'll put, uh, we'll weld, fully weld it out, pre-stress it. Wow. So that way, if we flip it over, it's nice and flat. Um, that's, I love it. When we first started out, 
we had the ship mode go down there where everything looked like a ship. So just trying to get out there. We didn't pre stress. So a lot of a lot of lessons learned uh, when you're doing this for yeah. over 20 years. And if I'm looking at it, I can see it on the side here, right? Yeah, you can see how 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 we get a close up of that. Yeah, how awesome. And this is mainly our structural line here. So with this bay and that bay right there, it's all structural. And then as we go into the other two bays over here, we have a full ASME shop. Uh, we just deployed out uh, the 14, I believe they were 38,000 gallon stainless steel API certified tanks uh, for a EV manufacturer. Wow. So we just don't do carbon steel. We do a lot of, a lot of uh, process implementation skids uh, where we have these nice blinds up there so we don't cross contaminate. Excellent. I don't think we're doing any stainless over there right now, but we can walk over there and check it out if you want to. Sure thing. Yep. All right, Brian, what are we looking at here? All right, Tony, this is this is our ASME section. So we do we have our ASME, we have our U U1 stamp in here. So we can build pressure vessels uh, up to about 3,800 psi uh, right here at Envirocept. Uh, we have our own CWI inspectors here at Envirocept. And we utilize the sub arc machine. Um, it's not running right now, but this machine actually allows us to do uh, automated welding where it actually drops in pellets through here. Um, you can sit there and weld with this machine with just the standard safety glasses in there. Wow. There's no arc, really beautiful process. Um, but we just deployed out, uh, I believe it was 14, uh, 38,000 gallon tanks that were a stainless steel. We did it here in this thing. Each revolution of that, that was only a 10 foot diameter tank, but each revolution of well only took us about 38 minutes. Wow. So a 10 foot of well, well, 10 foot diameter uh, of weld for about 38 minutes. What would that take without this machine? I say a good couple days because you're wow. going to have to wow. stick weld, MIG, however they want to do it. And then you're going to have to grind it out. This process too, it's really zero grinding. Huge time saving. Very time saving. And it's, uh, you know, I always tell the guys on the floor, this will never replace you. That's right. These guys are craftsmen. Right. The fit up of these is what the real craftsmanship is. When they take it there and they say it's got to be 38 and a quarter inches, it's got to be 38 and a quarter inches end to end. And they fit it up perfect. This All is just a better tool in their hands. Exactly. And right. so we have a lot of automated welder pogo machines that are there, uh, position welders. So these guys can fit them up and then we can let the machines do Or our guys will load them up as well. Nice. So I'll keep building. We've come a long way from just guys out there burning stick. That's right. Yeah. And uh, this would be the base of a tank? Yeah. So this is actually, uh, this is a flat bottom tank. It's non-ASME coated tank. Right. This is something that's actually going here local in Georgetown. We're helping out somebody else where we're building a little silo for them. Um, nice. So it's just a flat bottom tank, non-coated. I'm not sure how tall it's going to go or what connections are going on in there or what it's actually used for. But I just know it's going here local. It's going to uh, hold some kind of fluid probably. Fluid or grain, something like oh, that. Oh, okay. Yeah, we don't yeah. know. Um, but then you can see here, we're, we're, we're building another vessel here too. That's going to be an ASME tank. It has some kind of uh, baffle that's in there. So at Envirocep, we design and do uh, large chill water buffer tanks, steam accumulator tanks, and that, right. we'll put in there, we'll put buffers in there. And we'll actually have CFD analysis done if the, if the engine would want it, to actually see what's happening in the tank. So wow. a lot of data centers right now, they're building these large tanks and they're doing, you know, water there that's tempered so that if they in the event that they lose power they can run that water through there keep everything up online and not lose all their data right and keep it running so we're actually sowing the, the the turbulence that's in the water the actual heat transfer that's going to be done in the water so we can issue that to a to an owner and it's just a that piece of mind again we're trying to engineer these system forms i hear what i hear is a lot of experience a lot of experience for sure yeah uh, other things that are in this bay too. I mean, we have some guys working back there that are just doing piping. Uh, we have our own roller back there too, where we actually roll our tanks. So we can do up to about three quarters of an inch thick. Um, and then as you see, probably walk around here tomorrow, you'll see some tanks in here that are just a quarter inch thick, a inch thick. So whatever's needed for the application, whatever's engineered for that, that's the material. Three that quarter use. inch? Three quarter inch. Yeah, it's very, very robust. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Cool. Right. Thanks for the tour. Yeah. Great.